So you imagine with that, um, you know, you can't analyze all that once because you've got loads going all different directions, all adding up. So now we're talking about our load combinations. So combination one. Normally combination one is 1.35 times the dead load, which is self-weight. That's just an 1170. Combination two is 1 1.2 times dead load plus 1.5 times the live load. The live load in this case is people walking around on the roof, um, other minor things on the roof like that. Okay, load case three. Sorry, load combination three. Then let's talk about a west wind. So I label it west wind. So for that one, we go 0 0.9 times the dead load, because we're never considering an uplift. We only we underestimate the dead load slightly. And this is the west wind blowing this way. So we need plus number 10. And that gets us both those loads. Plus, that was 10. That was 11 actually there. Plus 11 plus 12. Plus 11 plus 12. And let's go to the inflation pressure plus 14. All right, there's one of our combinations. Let's go another combination for west wind is 0 0.9 times the dead load plus 10 plus 11 plus, let's go 13 this time. Ah, uh, what happened to 12? Ah, okay, no, plus 15. So in this case, we considered where the wind actually turns into a downforce here, and we're taking it with the internal pressure. Okay? Now, I could have said plus 12, um, but we know immediately that would be less severe than that, because we're talking about uplift and the building being sucked down at the same time. So I've already skipped a load case, just because I know it's not going to be severe. Okay, so that's one more load case. All right, now, so that's the west wind. I think we're done with the west wind now. Uh, this is the strength, by the way. Okay, if we want to talk about uh, west wind deflection, then we can go the dead load, because you don't factor the dead load, plus It's going to be the deflection of that exactly. So 0.7. This is assuming that, sorry, when you work out the deflection wind, you work out the pressure, then you compare it to the strength pressure. And you get a number which is normally like between 65% and 75%. Mm -hmm. And let's say for the sake of argument only, it's 0.72. Just a bigger number. 0.72 times 10 plus 0.72 times 11 plus 0.72 times 12. Plus 0.72 times 14. <coughs> uh -huh. I can already see a mistake. Okay, the mistake is that that factor of the tributary area, you know, the 0.8. Mm -hmm. You can either deal with that in calculating each of these loads, or you can try and put that in here with the combinations and go 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Okay? So let's say for the sake of argument, we knew this portal frame carries more than 100 square meters. And so I've already put the point <coughs> 8 into each of those loads. I would recommend you do it like that. Um, the downside of that, of course, is if you're actually not considering the tributary area, but you're considering the, you know, where you have the four factors thing, yeah. then it would be best to put them in like that and put the point 8s in here over here. Yeah, uh, you've got to pick one and, and know what you're doing and stick with it, all right? Um, so number six is the deflection. So load case five and three correspond. That's the strength, that's the deflection. Load cases four and six are going to correspond, as in going dead load plus 0.72 times 10 plus 0.72 times 11 plus 0.72 times load case 13. Plus 0.72 times load case 15. Okay. All right. 
Now let's go the wind going this way. Okay, lowercase wind going that way. No, 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 we didn't get there yet. Okay, hang on, I've, I've messed, this, messed, messed you up. This one here. That was 10 and 11, which is an uplift, and then a down force on that way. And we've used the point 0.9, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah so if you do, if it's half. If you've got half uplift and half, half down, down. down. Yeah, it's yeah. a good question. What you probably should do is, where you've got the uplift, use the point 0.9, and where you've got the down force, use 1.2. So that splits the dead load into these two dead loads. Plus 1.2 times dead load B. So dead load A and B. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't normally go into that level of sophistication. I pick an uplift or a down force. Because what you find generally, if half of it's holding it down, half of it's pushing it up. Yeah. It's really then a matter about how much is it going to sway. And it's probably going to be worse. You're probably going to find that that's way worse than that. All right. But you're right, it could be that, depending on the shape of the structure, if you have this really weird shaped structure, you've got half pushing down, half going up, you're going to get this deflection kind of shape like that. Mm -hmm. I still struggle to think how it would be a limiting lowercase though. Okay. All right. So, Peter, your um, 11.9 is the uh, uh, yeah. Alright, where you have, where the dead load is helping hold the structure down yeah. against uplift, you use 0.9 times the dead load. Where the dead load is adding to your problem, because everything's pushing down on it, that's where you use the 1.2. Okay. But you don't use the light load. You know. Ah, yeah, good point. Right, when the wind is blowing, should the wind <laughs> you shouldn't have people on the roof. Yeah. Okay. If your live load consists of things like air conditioners, light fittings, and ceilings, whatever, when the wind blows, that will be there. So you have to think about some live load in the downforce cases. Some live load is going to be there. Um, in 1170, in the first chapter, it talks about, it's got mu factors. Excuse me if that particular letter is wrong, but it's one of those funny, <laughs> it's this one here. A kind of, that letter. Um, Basically, what that says, and those factors range from zero to one, and what it says is that when you've got this major windstorm, all your live load is not going to be there. Uh, if it's a building like holding storage, then the mu factor is 0.7, which says most of your live load is going to be there, possibly, because you're storing stuff. If it's like a place where the people congregate, it might be as low as 0.2. If it's a roof, they say zero, because you don't have people on the roof while the wind blows. Similarly, when you have a snow load, <laughs> when a wind like this comes along, it blows the snow off. So you don't need the snow and the wind together. All right. So seven was about the wind going this way. So seven is an east wind. So again, for the uplift case, we're going to have... Oh, <laughs> I think that was supposed to be that way, wasn't it? 17. Anyway, so we have dead load 0 0.9 times the dead load plus 17 plus that was 17 on that side, 17 on the roof. Oh, this is not the east wind, this is the north wind. This is blowing in for building out. Plus 17 on the roof, so they're the same load case. All right. Uh, plus a wind, uh, plus an internal pressure. 14 <coughs> plus, that should be it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Two things. Be aware that your internal pressure may be different with the wind going that way versus the wind blowing that way. Uh, again, it depends on the open doors and configuration. The, if you can possibly define your building as a leaky building, then the wind internal pressure is the same as all the way. And that's just one of the factors. If you've got dominant openings on one side, though, it changes. You know, predominantly inflates one direction or the other. So you'd end up with many more low cases. Okay. So, yeah, get a spreadsheet, keep track of them. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, and you have to be able to, when you come to it three days later, go, oh, what was that again? And work out where that number came, came from. Yeah. So if you have a spreadsheet with that number in it, versus my colleague who would work it out and calculate a punch of straight in space gas, and I'd never know if it was right. All right. Cool. The other thing, you notice these forces act normal to the roof. The uplift is not a vertical uplift. It's on an angle, same angle as the roof. All right. Thank you very much. No worries. Good luck, guys.